Hi, it's Bonnie Snyder here at the Tilsonburg Station Arts Center and in my show Paint Poetic, an exhibit of um, a partnership of art and poem. And I'm just going to walk you through some of my art and some of the poems that go with it. I was inspired to um, paint different poems that I loved and also some of the paintings that I did also inspired poetry as well. So here's a little tour just to show you. The first one here is called Lovely as a Tree and the poem that inspired it was Trees by Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. The next one is called Suspended. And this was a drop of rain after rainfall in my backyard. Suspended. This one was written by me. Sometimes my life is like this water droplet, suspended, contained, upside down, and only a reflection. The outside world is blurry, out of focus, yet that's where the real beauty exists. My little droplet bubble is fragile, shaky, but still supported by all that is strong and real. When all is said and done, it's where one chooses to focus. And this was written during a time of COVID, so very reflective of that time. The next two together, um, the first one is called Coffee Sunrise, and the second one is called Morning Glow. And the poem that goes with this, with these two, is called Morning by Mary Bartol. Above the hills a saffron glow, the heavenly azure, deepens higher, while through dark pines gleams long and low, a floating lake of fire. Within the grove fresh winds awake, a little gush of song is heard, and every plumy leaf of break by breezy sighs is stirred. One moment's chant, a hush profound, soft songs and ferny dances cease. To silence dies the murmuring sound, and motion glides to peace. The dawn has come with ecstasy, and I, a part of her and clay, breathe in the joy she giveth me, and put my care away. The next one is called Iris Inspiration. And the poem that goes with it is Iris, Most Beautiful Flower, by Edith Buckner Edwards. Iris, most beautiful flower, symbol of life, love, and light, found by the brook in the meadow, or lofty on arable height. You come in such glorious colors, in hues the rainbows surpass. The chart of color portrays you in petal or veins of your class. You bloom with the first in winter, with the last in the fall you still show. You steal the full beauty of springtime with your fragrance and sharp color glow. Your form and beauty of flower, an artist's desire of full worth, so, Iris, we love you and crown you, most beautiful flower on earth. The next one will be a poem that I think all of you will know. This is Poppy Party, and the poem is In Flanders Fields by John McCrae. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard mid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. 
The next one is called Chicory Charm. The poem is Chicory by John Updike. Show me a piece of land that God forgot, a strip between an unused sidewalk, say, and a bulldozed lot, rich in broken glass, and there, to lie on, will be chicory. Its leggy hollow stems staggering skyward, its leaves rough, hairy, and lanceolate, like pointed shoes too cheap for elves to wear. Its button blooms the tenderest mauve blue. How good of it to risk the roadside fumes, the oil-soaked heat reflected from asphalt, and wretched earth done colored like cement, too packed for any other seed to probe. It sends a deep taproot, delicious boiled, is relished by all livestock, lends its leaves to salads and cooked greens, but will not thrive in cultivated soil. It must be free. The next one is Love is Unfolding, and there are two that go with it. Um, Beauty Awakes and Love is Unfolding, and the excerpt is from Come Climb My Hill by Winston O. Abbott. Beside this murky pond, I saw the alchemist at work, drawing a slender green shoot upward from the muddied waters, lifting it ever gently toward the golden sunlight and I stood enraptured as the glossy leaves unfolded to cradle a fragile blossom of incomparable beauty and flawless perfection. And as the fragrance filled the summer day, I wondered at the ease with which the Creator transmuted foul mud and ugliness and decay into shimmering radiance and rare perfume. And then in a moment of awareness I knew that a pond lily too receives its precious gift of life from the gentle hands of the great alchemist. Next is a celebration of orchids. And this is just a little quote by Confucius. An orchid in a deep forest sends out its fragrance, even if no one is around to appreciate it. The next two represented a beach time uh, with my family. And the first one is Sweet Cousins, my two granddaughters. And the second one was just a beach scene. And I wrote a little haiku to go with this. I like writing haiku poems. Family beach time. Swim, explore, eat, rest, repeat. My heart feels so full. And over here, this one is called Playtime. It started out as um, just a regular painting of a scene, but it just wasn't working and I really felt like I just needed to play for a bit. So I just turned it totally into an abstract and had fun. But it inspired um, a friend of mine to write a gospel uh, song to go with it. And she called it Whispers of Hope by Rose Naomi O'Bray. And the chorus is, whispers of hope can be heard midst the din of the world and the circumstances that we live in. Can you hear the promises of God being breathed? Does your soul rest in hues and be anchored? Each day he bids us, come unto me, I'll shoulder your burden while setting you free. The more moments with him, the more you will find. He's the love, he's the comfort and peace for your mind. Whispers of beauty and designs that can't fail as each person leans into their daily travail. We will remain standing, lives painted with hope. Unspeakable, unspeakable love whispers, with me you can cope. With our hearts set wide open, our mouths do not speak. Your whispers, Abba Father, I fervently seek. Secure in your presence, alone but not frail. Your arms wrap around me and stillness prevails. Your will and your way and timing, you said, would cause all things harmful to make our hearts glad. Love for my father, my brother, and me. I hear your word echoing, setting me free. Constant in prayer, Holy Spirit endowed. The words pass between us, yet never out loud. Thanks be to Jesus for atoning my sin, my Savior, my brother, by whom I've been cleansed. By Rose Naomi O'Gray. Next one is Love is, hap um, 
Love is inspiring. And the poem is Lilies by Ellen M. Carroll. Snowy, stately lilies in a jade green bowl, feast for my earth dust wearied eyes, refreshment for my soul. Let me sit here in this dim room, quiet in a willow chair, drifting, your faint intriguing breath makes perfume. The still air seems a magician's passageway for holy heart deep dreams. Snowy, fragrant lilies in a jade green bowl, peace born of your exquisiteness sanctifies my soul. The next two, were, these were of a cheeky little grasshopper that was sitting on a table. And these are two digital photos, actually. But the poem that I chose to go with these is called The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? The next one is A Host of Golden Daffodils and another familiar old poem from my childhood that I had to learn how to uh, memorize. I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. The next three together are autumn ones, Flashy Fall, The Little House on the Hill, and Apsley Autumn too. And again, another poem by Mary Oliver, Song for Autumn. In the deep fall, don't you imagine the leaves think how comfortable it will be to touch the earth instead of the nothingness of air and the endless freshets of wind? And don't you think the trees themselves, especially those with mossy warm caves, begin to think of the birds that will come, six, a dozen, to sleep inside their bodies? And don't you hear the goldenrod whispering goodbye, everlasting being crowned with the first tuffets of snow, the pond vanishes and the white field over which the fox runs so quickly brings out its blue shadows and the wind pumps its bellows and at evening especially, the piled firewood shifts a little, longing to be on its way. The next three together are um, Spread Your Wings, Sweet Landing, and Too Tall. And these, um, the two butterfly ones go with a poem that was written by my sister, Sylvia Edmonds. A butterfly lights on my belly of all places, a cocoa and caramel winged one, its sporty cream and vanilla ovals on those beautiful wingtips. It stays and stays. I thrill to its fluttering stillness, its utter silence. I wonder, would it come to my hand? Slowly, zen-like, I move my open hand to my belly. 
it stays some more. And then do I actually feel its tiny feet making the shift to my skin? Or is it simply by magic there? It stays and stays some more. Am I Buddha already? I stay still for an eternity, an instant. If I hadn't begun to walk again, perhaps it would have stayed longer. But then it was just the right amount of time. And for Too Tall, it's called Friends in the Forest by Bernard Freeman Trotter. And this was um, a friend of mine. It was her grandfather's cousin who wrote this from a book called Canadian Twilight and Other Poems of War and of Peace. Friends in the Forest. Give me no crowded city when my heart is lone and sad with its countless thronging thousands. The tumult will drive me mad. In the throbbing life of the city, who cares for another's moan? Though around me the crowd were surging, I should stand by myself alone. Give me no heaving ocean, give me no windswept plain, for there is but time for brooding, nothing to heal the pain. But give me the wide-spread forest with its hemlock and beech and pine, with its ash and its oak and its maple and its fern and its mosses fine with its rocky glens and streamlets and the music of waterfalls, with its birds and beasts and flowers and its dreamy wildwood calls. Though I wander alone through the forest, there are friends upon every hand, tried friends who comfort and soothe me as they whisper, we understand. The next one is Safe in Harbor. And really, it's a, an old hymn that I chose to go with, this one called Will Your Anchor Hold by William James Kirkpatrick. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It is safely moored till the storm withstand, for it is well secured by the Savior's hand, and the cables passed from his heart to mine can defy that blast through strength divine. Will your anchor hold in the straits of fear when the breakers roar and the reef is near? While the surges rave and the wild winds blow, Shall the angry waves then your bark o'erflow? Will your anchor hold in the floods of death when the water's cold till your latest breath? On the rising tide you can never fail while your anchor holds within the veil. Will your eyes behold through the morning light the city of gold and the harbor bright? Will, your, will you anchor safe by the heavenly shore when life's storms are past forevermore? It's hard to not sing that one. <laughs> The next one is Moonlight Sonata on the Danforth. And this one is also one I wrote called January Moon. January moon poised midair, bound on its journey from here to there. Orange orb challenges us to try to reach and pluck it from the sky. How can the moon be so bright to boldly lighten up the night? It stays until the light of day causes it to fade away. Are we also like the moon? Do we fade away too soon? The answer is to take it slow. Shine brightly now before we go. This one is called Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. And again, is one of those childhood ones that we needed to learn to uh, memorize. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Now well, the next five are all part of a series I did um, 
called Happy Trails and it was during COVID as well and I really wanted to just explore some of the local uh, trails. This one is called Come Walk With Me. What's Around the Bend? Reflections on Smith's Pond. Bright Spot on the Trail. And Reflections on an October Morning, Embro Pond. And the song that I chose for this one was Happy Trails by Dale Evans and sung by Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. And this is a, um, a show that was on back in the 50s, maybe 60s. But it, it's, some trails are happy ones, others are blue. It's the way you ride the trail that counts. Here's a happy one for you. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you until we meet again. And for me, that was the real message of living through COVID, was to just try to stay positive and healthy and um, till we meet again. So that's my little tour. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit more about the poems that have been inspiring the art and the art inspiring the poems. And till we meet again, thanks for listening in. Bye-bye.